Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com. Now, once upon a time, Britain used to be one of the countries when it came to electronics. Specifically, not consumer electronics, but um, military electronics and sort of background electronics. For example, you know, we created broadband and then gave, gave it away. And uh, we used to have some massive companies that used to do a lot of this type of stuff. We used to have the Thorn Group, you know, with EMI and stuff. We used to have, uh, who else we have? We had Ferranti, we had Marconi, we had Lucas, and we also had a company called Raycol. And that's the company we're going to be looking at today. Now, Raycol. Now, the first time I ever remember seeing Raycol on anything was on Vans because Raycol were the people behind Vodafone. You know, that massive mobile phone network, which, of course, we sold because it seems like as British, we, we can't actually keep hold of any of our industries. We have to run them badly and, and sell them off. You know, don't get me started on our shipbuilding and training industries. But anyhow, Raycol, at this point, I'm thinking this tape is probably 70s, was a decent sized company. Uh, they did a lot of military stuff. I mean, specifically radar. They're very into radar and into telecommunications. And... Uh, they seem to also break into consumer stuff. Now, I've read that this these cassettes really weren't that commonly available in shops. They were they were more like you know like um, you have the Maxell professional stuff, which was more designed for business, etc. And these these are what these were more designed for. I mean, I never recall seeing Raycol cassettes in the shops. But then again, looking at this, this is a very 70s cassette. But I like the big bronze badge on it. But yeah. Raycall here, if we see Raycall Zonal Limited, and they're in Sussex and they had a, a place in Canada as well. So, Zonal is the word there, because if we go on to this next one, they've, they've now started calling them Raycall Zonals. And Zonal apparently are well known for their reel to reel tape and also later for their DAT tape. And this ties in with this very late one, which is a just branded Zonal, and I've seen DAT tapes like this, but this came to me from Big Kelv from Tape Heads, who sent it to me to have a look at, and it's taken me a while to get all these together, but I really want to look at these, because we had EMI, which was an old English tape, and uh, Max Hell made some in England as well, but this was about the only other one that I could think of, that is all British, Ray Cal Zonal. So, let's have a look at these tapes today. Now, Let's start over with the XL Gold C90, which I'm probably guessing is the later, the earliest one. 70s style, you know, horizontal, compact cassette logo. Let's be honest, this doesn't look premium. It can say XL Gold all it likes, but this hasn't got a patch on like a Maxell UD XL2 in the look stakes at this time. And I'm going to this blind. These are very old cassettes. They are still sealed. They might not work, they might be type 0 when they were new, they might be type 0 now, they might have rotted away. But let's just have a look. Ooh, let's look at that, the gold thing's like opening a packet of cigarettes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it is, it's like a cigarette test. So let's see what this looks like, because I'm going in blind here, I don't even know what these look like. So let's have a look. So, oh, there we go. Decker. Ah, interesting. So even though... Yeah, right, okay, so I'm starting to get some thoughts here because it says XL Gold 90 Raycol, and like I said, these were more like professional use. But Decca, Decca must have been a subsidiary of Raycol, uh, and Decca released a lot of music stuff. I, I remember cassettes and records being made by Decca. So the question is maybe this is just, uh, you know, Oh no, this is professional for use in a professional equipment because it's Raycol. But underneath it, it's just a, a Decca tape. But saying that, I can't ever recall seeing lots of Decca tapes. But, as we say at the top, made in England. And, I must say, this is a welded shell. I mean, like I say, I can't date this, but it's got to be 70s. But I don't recall seeing many welded shells, sonically welded from this sort of time period. I mean, you know, even type zeros from this type, this time had screwed shells, but, hmm, interesting. So let's uh, wind the tape on a bit. Let's have a see what the tape looks like, or if it winds up, oh, okay, it's winding nice and nicely. 
nice and smooth. I use this. If, if I use this and it squeaks a lot, it usually says that there's something wrong. But let's have a look at the tape on this. So that is not looking too bad. It's quite dark, really. I mean, it's not sandpaper. It's, if we can get it in the light, it's calendered. It's as shiny. It seems smooth. Interesting. This uh, doesn't seem to indicate side A or B because you have to write it on itself. But yeah. So that's quite a surprise. So let's have a see if there's anything on the J card which says anything. Let's have a look. Made in England by Ray Carl Zonal in Sussex and like I say also in Canada. But other than that, yeah, XL Gold. But it's it's got a deck of tape in it. Interesting. I like that. That's interesting. Well, it's not interesting in the grand scheme of things, but... Uh, in the parts of this video it's interesting okay so let's have a look at the next one which i think is probably a bit younger because now they're calling it ray carl zonal are we gonna have another decker brandy cassette in this don't know it seems to have the same sort of cigarettes paper on there let's have a look no this one is completely blank so this is oh hang on so right so, yeah, this is, say, side one, and it's screwed, but it's wound all the way to the end of side one. You know, it's normally you'd have side one, and it would be wound there, and I'm, I've seen these sort of shells before. Where have I seen these shells before? Are these... Right, bear with me one second. I've got to set over here. I just want to check it out. One second, though. Let me just see if I can do this without wrecking the camera. Right, there we go. Remember these? The Beric ones. Let's have a look. No, they're not the same shell at all. I thought there might be an EMI there, but no. It, I'll, I'll have to have a look. I'll, I'll put a... I'm going to put a little thing here now after I've done a bit of research. Because like I say, I'm coming in blind on this. What type of shells these are? And they are... There we go. That's what I found on the internet since making this. But yeah, this is a very plain ref A90 index. Let's see if there's anything interesting in the J card. Blake Ozonal, low noise. No. So, bit boring looking. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's solid, but this, this really does look like a police interview tape, doesn't it? Let's. Uh, wind the tape on a bit let's see if it's oh now you see this yeah this if we look now this is flowing freely yeah if i put this on the cassette it's not this is not winding at all this is very yeah th yeah this this cassette is completely stuck i'll just give it a bash See if it moves at all. All right, it's moving now. Okay, yep, it was the uh, the holes were just a bit stuck. A little bash and it's done. Right, let's have a look at the tape on this now. This tape is lighter than the other one. The the pad isn't quite in the middle, but again, it it doesn't look like sandpaper. It is calendered. It is shiny. So let's have a see. I'm, I, I just don't like the way this was wound. Let me just wind this back to the beginning again. Right, that's nice and smooth. Okay. Right, so yeah, the, the side two is the one which is wound straight out of the envelope. Good old British quality control there. Maybe that's why our industry disappeared. Anyway, okay. So we've got them two. Now, this is a later one. And this, I think, is much later. I mean, considering darts were around in this packaging, we've got to say this is probably early, mid-90s, so to speak. But it's a very much more modern hill. Modern Hill, I'm just, just because I thought Red Red Hill there, and I thought Modern Hill. It's a much more modern looking cassette. So, uh, yeah, if we look, there's different addresses. Here one, it was Station Hill, Pound Hill. They like, they like the hills, don't they? In Crawley. And now it's in Red Hill. So, it's not massively different. They've just, they must have been just doing a different plant. Because that's an RH1 postcode. That's an RH10, and this one, where did this one say it was? 
that just says yeah red hill sorry so no nah. well let's have a look at this one now I'm, I'm severely doubting at this point that this one is going to be made in england as well i doubt very much it'll just be i think a rebrand this but let's have a look what it says anyway so the cassette itself let's have a look let's have a look at this shell uh yeah nothing screaming out at me and neither of these hubs these hubs aren't screaming out I, I kind of been expecting basf hubs but they're not these i don't know if you can see these don't have the the, the telltale lines in them which normally say they're a basf stuff and the shell again doesn't scream out anything obvious to me at the moment um let's see if the j card gives any sort of hint again just saying where zonal is no it doesn't say made in england anywhere but it does say it's a super ferric so uh yeah so there we go like i say it's uh a company mostly known for military electronics that was big and got cassettes here like i said that's that's the, the intriguing one the xl gold c90 which has got a decker brandy cassette in it which i think is really cool because i've never seen a decker brandy cassette before this one looks like a police interview tape and this is a late one so i guess the only thing to do now is to uh let's fire up a deck and let's have a listen and see if they're any good at all Okay, so I'm going to use my Iowa today. Normally, I would never put the uh, the deck on top of an amp, but it's just I'm trying to uh, get it all in place because I'm going to be using the vinyl deck as my source today. Oh, vinyl deck, it's a record deck, whatever. It's a thing that plays flat bits of vinyl, however you want to call it. So, why am I doing that? Well, it kind of uh, escaped your attention that uh, my record label has uh, just released our first release. This is Synthwave 2 on a beautiful gatefold double vinyl. Someone said that uh, the inside of this reminded them of the old Now album where you had all the, uh, the details of the artists on it. And that's exactly what uh, this was all about, trying to get it to look like that retro and good. That's the first disc on there, which is a beautiful pink translucent vinyl. The, uh, the second disc is beautiful uh, translucent blue and uh, yeah it's uh, I'm really really pleased with how it's turned out it's it's been a testament to the waiting time because we've had to use well I think the best pressing plant in the world from what I've heard and what I've seen they use brand new viral warm tone presses which are modern not stuff from the 40s or 50s each track as we've said has been mastered individually from uh, the source specifically for vinyl it's been done quiet it's minus six but everyone said that it's as good as vinyl sounding as, as they've had and in fact one guy said it was perfection so yeah i'm going to use it as the source for this and yeah before you say you know in america oh it's very expensive to ship you're right it is but so is everything we can't send anything across the atlantic of that size properly protected for a pound it doesn't exist but think about it this way if you are a vinyl collector and uh, you've got this vinyl in america you're in a very very exclusive club because there aren't many copies over there and if you want to resell it on discogs well you've got to factor that in haven't you that it's always going to be an expensive record to have that apparently sounds amazing so let's calibrate these tapes up first so we're going to start with the decker and like i say all made in england 70s i i don't know what to expect here i'm not expecting good things to be fair but let's just uh right get it calibrated okay so uh let's just have a tweak of this put it to center and let's see how it looks compared to the ux so it's very down on bias uh, level isn't too bad but the bias isn't there so let's crank the bias let's give it a load of negative well let's take a lot of bias away oh and there we go so, yeah. so if we look at it now 
it's almost full negative bias but the rex sensitivity is okay and uh, yeah it's about there so i'm not going to batter this i'm going to let's have a look let's just put this at five bearing in mind that the vinyl itself is recorded and plays back at minus six so uh let me just get the vinyl queued up and we'll do some recording so let's just uh over there right so uh doo -doo -doo -doo. and this time i'm not going to do a, a needle drop like i did last time it's track two let's see if i'm getting any better at queuing this up so lift it up track two okay it's about there might spill over a bit but let's have a look so uh this track that i'm going to play I love this track and this guy that plays it, such an absolute gentleman, he's so humble. This was his first attempt to at the synthwave track. He, he's an ex, um, an ex metaler and you can tell because there's a lot of guitar in this. And he was stunned that I took this track and his next track that's coming is going to be the headline track on this is synthwave 3, it's that good, but it's this gentleman here, Neilio, and yes, that is what the track is called. Taxidermy Flute Cat and the Jazz Animals of Codwood. Like I say, of all the people you meet in this world, the unique ones are the best. So let's get this queued up and let's get some recording done. Are you recording or what? There we go, that's better. Right. Recording now. Let's see if I can drop this properly. Nope. That's the thing I, I, I love about uh, digital tracks. It just starts. Let's see if I can drop it better now. Nope. I'm still getting Kyrgyz baby. Let's try now. Okay, it's starting. Well, hey. Okay, let's just stop that one there. You know, it's not as good with the files. You're going to mess around more with your hands with the vinyl, but yeah, that that sounded really good. That had no business. The seventies English cassette had no business sounding that good, but that sounded really good to me. If someone had said that was a, a TDKD in there, I would have said yeah. I mean, fair enough. It was peaking no higher than zero, but. Um, very, very, look, have you seen in this light, the, the tape's quite see-through almost, but, uh, yeah, 
very good tape yeah i'm impressed with that okay so let's move on to what i think the slightly later one is and i've re rewound this all the way to side one as it should be the sort of very plain interview cassette which has a shell which uh yeah um i'm not expecting great things it doesn't look great it probably doesn't sound great but if it's got the same tape in as the first one who knows let's see how it calibrates in comparison to it so let's just uh, put the calibration on and it seems that the calibration is pretty much exactly the same let's just uh, tape the bias down a bit but yeah it's, it's pretty much exactly the same as, as it was before okay so we'll leave everything the same let's see if it sounds as good so let's continue with taxidermy flute cat and the jazz animals of codwood Yeah, like I say, if I found this in a box of mixed-use cassettes, I probably wouldn't even bother putting it in my deck because it looks so low rent. But again, this performed really well. That that had no business in sounding as good as it did. Yeah, impressive so far. So this one now looks like a completely different tape. It's got a different leader, different shell. It's older. It doesn't say Raycal anymore because Raycal had been sold off at this point. But let's. Uh, Let's see how this one calibrates compared to the other, see if there's any sort of semblance of uh, family hereditary in there. Um, well, it's not massively different. Let's just uh, turn the bias, give it some bias. Okay, give it some level. Remove some more bias, that's all. Yeah, it's not mega stable, but it's about there, okay fair enough so what this says now that it's a super ferric so i'm going to crank this up a bit see if we can get this peak in at about plus four um now i've got the fight of trying to get the vinyl in the right place again just bear with me because i'm going to play you all of that track now all the way through because it's such a superb track it deserves to be played all the way through so let's get this recording and let's see if i can line it up properly Nope. I could say I must be blind. Let's try again. Hey, there we go. Thank you. 
that cat meow sample at the end of that always gets me. The sign of genius, brilliant. So, uh, yeah. So this one, I don't know. It's not super ferric, as you notice, I had it up at about plus four and I started to sense dist distortion, so I, I turned it down to about two, where I left it around one, and it's, it's an average late ferric. It's nothing particularly special, um, but, you know, seemed competent enough. The truth. So the British had a dabble in the old tape business, but they got out of it pretty quickly. You know, mostly in the 70s. I don't think I've encountered a British-made Type 2 or a British-made Type 4. It's only ever been Type 1. Yeah, we had Maxell saying Made in England on all sorts of cassettes, but let's be honest, Made in England for them meant put together in England. The tape was made elsewhere, most probably Japan. But... I don't know, being English myself, I like the idea of having some English cassettes, you know, especially when they're like made in England on the shelves. It's good, but uh, I was quite surprised by these. I mean, this one again, like I say, looks like Type Zero. Open it up, it's got a completely different cassette in there. I mean, if I got this in, if I got this used and hadn't taken the cellophane off it myself personally, I would have thought they'd just put this in the wrong box. But no, apparently that's how it is, and I wonder, I might do a bit of digging, but if you could get Decca blank cassettes, and like I say, this was just a way to make them look more military and professional for professional use. You put them in a Rayco box, as opposed to it being Decca, which was something we recognised off albums and cassettes, which you could buy. This one, I say, again, Raycal Zonal, looks professional, looks very professional. I'm guessing these probably have the same tape in them, different shells, different ages, but the, the tape was so similar between them in the calibration states, you know, the, 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 I'm pretty sure they're probably the same tape. This zonal, again, a late ferric. I mean, considering there's probably at least 15 to 20 years difference between these, I personally don't think this really performed much better. It's not a super ferric as far as I can tell because it was taken at plus four, but I could hear the distortion and it looks cheap. Um, I think this is just, you know, a, a rebrand. It doesn't say made in England anywhere on it, but uh, again, Zonal is supposedly well known for their reel-to-reel -reel tape and like I say, I just thought they were an interesting little collection because these two especially, uh, these are the, the, the first ones of these I've, I've ever seen. Uh, but like I say, these easily, performance-wise, I think would have been up to an equivalent D or um, HF of the same time period. I think it could have stuck with them. It, you know, they were pretty good performers, this one. Well, yeah, it's nothing particularly bad about it, and thanks for sending it, Kelv, but there's nothing particularly special about it other than its heritage. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, like I say, I'm going to... I don't beg for anything really on here, but I do this channel for free. There's no uh, Patreon. 99% of you have never bought a cassette off me, but... If you want to go along and get a high quality album full of great brand new 80s style music, do me a favour, go and get a copy of This Is Synthwave 2. I'd really appreciate it. And plus you're going to have a high quality album that looks great, that's very rare. It's in, the, in the future, they will be worth more than you'll pay now for it, put it that way. So if you want to pop along here, bing, get yourself a copy, show me a bit of love. But other than that, thanks for watching, happy taping, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.